Hi, how's everybody doing today? This is Sean. I'm here with a, a, a kind of a response video. Uh, before I do that, I'd like to say uh, hi to my friends that are watching and uh, some of my friends I play tennis with uh, Monday through Friday. They uh, come across my channel. Uh, hi, Kent. Uh, I played doubles with Kent today. He's a good player. And uh, we had uh, a great time. We ended up playing against uh, June and uh, what's the other lady's name? I think Gail. But uh, they're up, uh, June's uh, in her 90s, and she's out here every you know, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And a great player. Just uh, as you get older, uh, everybody knows as you get older, you're a little bit, uh, it's a little harder for you to move. So that's the only difference between, like I say, Tuesdays and Friday, uh, Thursdays. So <clears throat> that being said, um, my friend Kent has got a really good forehand. And he's got a he's got a good game and he has a good serve. So what happens is this is a uh, this is the scenario, and this is going to lead into to Nick and into the tennis. We talked about different serves. So this is the scenario. Say for instance you have a round robin and uh, there's all different age groups and you're uh, I'm 50. So you say you're like with my age, you're 50 and you're, you're able to to play really you know at three five or at least at a four zero level solid you know and the one person you're serving to is a 4-0 or 4-5 player and you can really rip into the ball and then when you go to the ad side you uh have a player that's a little older and can't move and stuff so you have to totally adjust you know uh, your serve because i ain't ripping balls uh you know the big serves like that people that are just uh out to have fun and you know it's, there's no there's nothing there's nothing involved in it you know and i'm just not like that so it kind of throws your rhythm off serving you know, because I have a first serve where I just like kind of throw, you know, throw it in, spin it in, and just like kind of place it. And then, uh, you know, my flat serve when I'm playing against good people, I will hit my flat serve out wide and, or uh, down the tee, you know, and uh, that's how I was taught to play. And then I'll use slices and spin serves, not considered, you know, I guess it wouldn't be considered a kick serve, but it, 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 it jumps pretty high off the court when I, when I use this type of spin on it. So, I'm having problems like um, when I'm playing, in, you know, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on my second serve because I'm kind of I'm I'm not throwing it the way I do in practice, and I'm not throwing myself at it like I would be playing, you know, if I was playing uh, against higher level pl players or people at my level. So that's something I'm going to work on. So I come across the, this is what I'm saying. You know, I come across Nick's channel uh, a while back, and uh, I took his advice, you know, as he's a coach, and I watch his videos and. And learn from him, and I learned from uh, Peter Becker and uh, and um, Beal. I learned from her, uh, and um, who else is always oh, essential tennis um, uh, crew. So I watch him, and um, one of my favorite players is uh, is Simon Freud. He uh, he plays doubles, and he, I like the way he plays. So. I, uh, Nick was talking about a slice serve because the topic was Sinner was practicing practicing serve and, and he was like the balls were wet and people were like oh that's a flat serve and stuff and then Nick was saying that that flat hard serve is uh, out wide in the corners is one of the harder serves to hit which I never knew that because that's the only you know like that I learned how to play on clay when I was about 16 17 I started playing tennis consistently but um then I stopped playing for a long time but uh, on the clay serve, when you hit a big flat serve out wide, it's a big advantage for you because, you know, especially in doubles, you're pulling the per your person off the court and you're able to, you know, set up strategies that way. So it, I've always done that. And I'm not a tall person, so I have to think, I think that it goes by your, you know, how your body, uh, your structure of your body and how you, I'm sorry that I keep touching my face. The bugs out here are so bad. I'm just, it, I, it's ridiculous. But, um, the, um, your body structure is how you're going to serve, you know. So let's try a couple things that he was saying. We're gonna work. I'm going to show you about slicing. I'm, I'm going to work practice on slice serve. I'm going to practice hard and, and try that. And my uh, my buddy that just uh, started watching me, he's a coach in Switzerland or, or uh, Sweden, one of the two. And he was saying throw the toss up a little higher. So I've been doing that. And um, actually, I've been serving not too bad. I've had I hit a few aces today. But I don't, I, I don't hardly ever double fault. It's like something that I don't ever do. And recently I have been double faulting because of what I was just talking about earlier. 
So that's why I want to work work on stuff so I can get this mechanics down, so I can actually you know swing the same way, but maybe not with so much pace or so much spin just to get the ball in play. And then you know uh, people sometimes just throw the ball up and they don't think about where they want to hit it in you know in the box. They don't think about if they're going to serve it out wide or if they're going to serve it down the middle of the tee or they're going to serve it to the person's body to just kind of put the ball in play. So you have to have some kind of strategy. When you know, think about what you, where you want to put the ball, and think about the person that you, if you know something about their game, like the, what's their strengths. If they can, if they got a big forehand and they like balls that are up, you know, shoulder waist high or whatever, like you know, the, the zone, then you wouldn't want to serve it to them like that. You would want to serve it to their backhand and make them hit up on it, you know, or or uh, pull them out wide where they can't actually hit through the ball on their forehand. So that's why slice. You know, developing a slice serve and developing different serves is important at every level. I'm not a pro or nothing like that, but I did play one on television before. Just kidding. But let's see, uh, Nick, was, Nick, Nick made a good point. He knows you can know, use a slice serve and you can control the ball a lot easier on a slice serve than it is to, to try to hit just a flat, hard, flat serve. Because even if you hit a hard, flat serve, just the momentum of your racket going through it when you snap it there's going to be some type of spin on it so not every shot is going to be completely flat um you know occasionally you might get lucky and hit a really really flat one where there's no spin on it but there's still going to be some kind of spin on it because of the way you rotate if you're holding a conventional racket i mean conventional grip and you throw the ball up and you're coming around this way and hitting on it or you're just coming around this way and hitting on it you're still snapping your wrist you see so let's try a couple Targets out to practice, and it gives you an idea of where the ball's landing too. So that helps if you have a problem. It's like, okay, if you have a ball. right side of the ball is the right hand player. So you can go really out wide. I mean I'm just be, I'm not even jumping into it you know just practicing the the and such. Yeah. 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 People hit it up high on the pinnacle of the height, you know, as it's as it's at the highest point. I don't know. I'm not an expert on that. I just know that every everywhere where you make contact on the ball is going to make the ball did react differently. So, so if you do let it drop a little bit, it's just going to react differently as if you were hitting it up high and just letting it, just, you know, at the high point of it. But let's see if we can get close to the phone. I mean, all the balls are going in, and a couple of them went wide, but let's see. Now, if I let that top stay up a little higher and hit it there, that one's going to go more wide, wide. so many times before things are broken. I just need people uh, quick for practice serve and that's all. So even though you you know you hit the slice the, the ball can still go out. You know it's not a, it's not as consistent as having a spin serve or a kick serve or something like that to get the ball and play it more consistently. So slice serves you can miss them. You know they're not 100 percent guaranteed.
about that long. And these wide bodies, that's what I'm saying with the profile. You have to hit, oh my goodness, these bucks are so bad. Good thing I love you guys, and I love tennis. Because I would not be out here with this condition. Okay, you're right, I should have played it. So the thing about it is, uh, even though you're you're throwing the ball and hitting it correctly, you're still got a good chance of missing it because of the way, uh, you know, how the ball's traveling in the air and stuff. So, we'll try, uh, try to come. I'm trying to hit it, but as I say, Throw the ball over a little bit more so like 11 o'clock too. So a lot of people do that. That was no. But I totally agree with you, Nick. Like I can just feel, I just felt it just now. Even though I hit, I thought that was a flat serve. When you saw, when I saw it hit, just by it just almost hit the cone. By the way, I'm going to get that cone. But with that flat serve, it still had a little spin on it. He was right, you know. Like if you watch the ball, that guy's very observant. <laughs> He's good. That's what makes him a good coach. And I like how he treats Shamir like he's doing good with that kid. That kid's got a bad foot, and he don't he don't want to baby it too much. You know, he like goes and trains him hard. So uh, I have a lot of respect for that guy. Right there, dude. You see that? Another one. That's a little when you do the slice too. That's how you see them in TV. You see people on TV. They're pros. You're like, wow, that's a wicked ass serve where they're hitting it. Like, wait. Wait, where that second cone is at, and even this inside further, no one's getting that serve. You know what I mean? So that's where the slice comes in. But I'm gonna, see, I'm gonna do a flat one. You can see what I'm talking about. Even though I'm hitting the flat, I got that conventional grip here. I got the flat thing here. Where my bracket's going is where the ball's gonna go. So right, I was hitting flat, and even though it was in the middle, it's still going in. I have to angle my racket more to get that cone. And that's where the slice and stuff comes in. That's the thing. It's easier to do it that way. So I'm gonna try flat for. So I can't hit serves like that on Tuesdays and Thursdays or on Monday through Monday, Wednesday and Friday going in like that with some of the people. Because what if I, I I always think what if I miss hit the ball like I because you can like you see some of the balls I hit long and I draw one of these people will ball is driving like 80, 90 miles an hour, you know, or whatever, 50 miles an hour. I don't even know how fast it's going. But it ain't worth it to me. I don't have the ego. I'm gonna try to move my hand over a little bit more. Uh, it's back to Continental, but I'm gonna try even more. Like, and throw it right there. Yeah, big difference, man. So there's a 
small curving. And uh, we'll try a flat one. Let's just give you an idea. It's just amazing, man. Just the littlest thing you do, just turning your rack here or there, and how, and how much you can pull the ball. Or like what you do with the tennis ball. Yes, one out of 50 is not bad, ma'am. <laughs> the highlight of my evening. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Yeah, these bugs are bad out here tonight, ma'am. like this is for people who are beginning or whatever you're hitting the ball like that you just that's just like and to practice that it's real simple you if you're just learning that's your first thought that's like you would hold a backhand right this right over right here is called continental so you line your knuckle up like that okay and some people even go back even further like that when they're hitting pictures and stuff but let's just take it simple hold it like that and then you got your Make sure your fingers are separated too and be and kind of loose, you know. Like my friend was saying, I need to loosen up myself. So I'm going to try that tonight. And then what you'll do is just practice. See? You see that? You hear, that's, that's, oh, watch out, camera. <laughs> uh, that's the sound you should hear when, you're, when, the, when the ball's coming off of the rack, uh, off of the serve for that one. You should hear that. See? It's a little easy, man practice doing that and you'll get touched too because you're almost doing a, you're almost doing a, a, a drop shot practice doing a drop shot too the balls you know it's just amazing you think you can learn Like over here too. So I agree with Nick. What happened was Skinner center hit the serve. The balls are wet. It looked like he's slicing it, but it was probably more of a flat, a flat ball. And the way it came off his racket because of the way the war is looked like a like a, a it was a weird looking serve. 
but you can see the trajectory of the ball because of how the brush of it, you know? That's how you can tell when you're playing return a serve to people or tip their serve. They'll stand a certain way and you watch the rocket come off the tennis, you know, off the off the string and you can get a jump on it. That's how I was taught how to play. I always watch how they, how people, uh, re, you know, how they stand, the idiosyncrasies. And then some people, like this thing, i seen this guy Ivan on uh, on um, Winston Dewey's channel serving the ball in the high 130 miles an hour. It doesn't matter if he's tipping it or not. You got to, you know, good luck trying to get to it. It's right down the middle of the tee. Maybe that ball would, oh my God, these balls are so bad. The, 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 the ball will literally, you would take your racket out of your hand if you're not holding it correctly, you know? So, I appreciate everybody watching. We're gonna set up the ball machine and I'm gonna set the cones up and we're, I'm gonna just practice and just smashing them, you know? But uh, every day I'm gonna come out and work on slicers and kickers and all that stuff, you know? Just get better and better at it. So, don't get, you know, don't get frustrated if you're Miss stuff. You see how I miss the target? It's not just hitting the target. It's actually putting the ball in between them and stuff and getting good at consistency and learning, you know, adapting to your mistakes and learning from them. So that's all. And uh, like I say, good playing today, Kent. I always love playing with Kent. He's such a nice person. Uh, we have fun, that guy and I. We, he, you know, we just have fun. And he's fast. He gets the tennis balls. And we have, we have fun, you know. It doesn't even matter what the score is. We're having so much fun sometimes we don't even know the score. Just like we're just out here hitting, playing around with friends and stuff, you know. So that's kind of cool. But um, that's my thing. On I, I, I think Nick's right. You know, you have to watch his channel. He's a good coach. And, um, you know, watch how he's teaching you how to hit slices. And uh, I'm going to learn too, you know. I, I mean, I know how to do it. I've been doing it for a long time. I just never think about what kind of serves I'm going to hit in a match. I just do it, you know. Like, I see a person... I've seen them while I'm hitting with them and how they're, I've watched them play before and uh, how they how they return serves. So that's how I, you know, whatever the situation brings, that's what I, that's how I, I address it, you know. And I may stand out further here. I might stand in the middle, you know, closer. I do old school serve, yeah, serve uh, you know, uh, serves too, you know, because you can be out of position if you're too far over in singles. That person's just going to drive the ball down the line and you're going to get to it. Uh, so, you know, you have, it's all strategy, folks. It's all patience, but the most thing is enjoying everything. Even know that I've been sickly and not in top shape, or uh, you know, top, feeling good. I'm out here and I'm trying, and that's all that matters. And then there's another thing: uh, this grip is a four and three eighths grip, and I'm used to a four and a half. So I might have to put another wrap around here to make it a little bit bigger too. So that's the only thing. So thanks for watching. We're gonna set up the ball machine and uh, you know, work on some proper shots tonight. Okay. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. And a uh, special shout out to Nick uh, from Intuitive Tennis because that's a good. Uh, that was a good lesson he put out there today, and it's uh, it's worth going and check it out. He's a good dude, also. Thank you.